Hi everyone, and welcome back. In this video, we'll continue with our discussion on the comparison test. Specifically, we'll start by revisiting this example, the sum from one to infinity of the terms one over two to the n minus one. Now recall from our previous lesson that we suspect that this series converges. And here's the reason why. When n becomes very, very large, this fraction, one over two to the n minus one, should be extremely close in value to one over two to the n. This additional minus one term in the denominator contributes very little to the overall value of this expression. And hence, this term and this term should be essentially indistinguishable. Now, since this series, the sum from one to infinity of one over two to the n converges, it's a convergent geometric series, maybe it makes sense that this series should converge as well. Now, we tried to show this formally using the comparison test, but unfortunately, we were unsuccessful. You see, if you want to compare these terms, 1 over 2 to the n minus 1 and 1 over 2 to the n, they actually become smaller when you remove that minus 1. This is sort of problematic, though, because if we know that the small series converges, we can't say anything about the large series without doing further tests. The large series could converge or it could diverge. This is a little bit frustrating though, right? Because our logic seemed reasonable. Since one over two to the n minus one and one over two to the n have the same long-term behavior, it makes sense that either both series converge or both series diverge. This is exactly what our next test will allow us to conclude. By modifying the comparison test to take into account the limiting behavior of these expressions, we'll be able to deduce the convergence of one series based on the convergence of the other. We refer to this as the limit comparison test, and you can read more about it on pages 130 to 131 of the course notes. All right, here it is, folks, the limit comparison test. This is one of my favorite convergence tests of all time because it just eats through difficult series. You'll see this in the examples to follow. The statement begins much like the comparison test. You have two series, a sum of a n's and a sum of b n's, and the terms in these series are positive. For this test, we let L denote the limit as n tends to infinity of a n over b n. Now, if that L is a constant that lies somewhere strictly between zero and infinity, then either both series will converge or both series will diverge. The intuition behind this calculation is as follows. Suppose that you compute this limit and you find that L is equal to five. That tells me that when n gets really, really large, a n is approximately five times b n. It's a constant multiple of b n. Well, a constant multiple is not going to affect the convergence of your series. If you multiply the terms of a convergent series by five, the resulting series will still be convergent, and it will converge to five times the value of the original series. Likewise, if you multiply the terms of a divergent series by five, the new series will still diverge. So it makes sense. The convergence of this series matches the convergence of this series. Let's try to apply this new test to our example from the previous slide. There, we were trying to understand a sum of terms a n, where a n was given by one over two to the n minus one. We'd like to compare this with a sum of terms b n, where the b n's have the same sort of limiting behavior as the a n's. Well, from our previous slide, you already know what b n's gonna be. It's gonna be one over two to the n. But more generally, if you were trying to choose a bn, we're gonna follow the same logic that we did for the comparison test. We're gonna pick the dominating term in the numerator and the dominating term in the denominator. So in this case, one over two to the n. We note that the terms that we're working with are positive, so the limit comparison test will apply. I next need to compute this limit. The limit as n tends to infinity of a n over bn. That would give me the limit as n tends to infinity of one over two to the n minus one divided by one over two to the n. If I simplify this, I get the limit as n tends to infinity of two to the n over two to the n minus one. And now we have a couple options. We could factor out two to the n from the numerator and denominator, or we could use L'Hopital's rule. I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Using L'Hopital's rule, this becomes the limit as n tends to infinity of two to the n ln two divided by two to the n ln two, which gives me a final value of one. Oh, now check it out. One is a constant that lies strictly between zero and infinity, right? 
So our limit comparison test tells us that either both series converge or both series diverge. But wait a second. The sum of the B ends is a convergent geometric series, which means the sum of the A ends must converge as well. Pretty incredible, isn't it? The fussiness that we saw with the inequalities from the comparison test, that's no longer an issue. Let's see a couple more examples. Here are two examples of series that we've already seen before. Let's see how they stack up against the limit comparison test. We encountered this first series when we talked about the integral test. To use the integral test, we first had to verify that this was continuous, positive, and decreasing, and then we had to evaluate an improper integral. Ugh, so much work. Instead, I'm going to try limit comparison. I'm interested in analyzing the sum of a n's, where a n is n squared over n cubed plus 1. I'm going to compare it with another series, a sum of terms b n. What should I pick for b n? Well, I told you we should look for the dominating term on the numerator and the dominating term in the denominator. So in this case, I think we should pick bn to be n squared over n cubed, which is 1 over n. Note that my ans and bn's are positive, which means the limit comparison test applies. To use the test, we need to compute the limit as n tends to infinity of an over bn. That gives me the limit as n tends to infinity of n squared over n cubed plus 1 divided by 1 over n. I simplify this, which gives me the limit as n tends to infinity of n cubed over n cubed plus 1. And now just like before, I can apply L'Hopital's rule. L'Hopital's rule gives me the limit as n tends to infinity of 3n squared over 3n squared, which is 1. We end up with a constant between 0 and infinity. So according to our limit comparison test, the sum of the ans and the sum of the bns must do the same thing. They either both converge or they both diverge. But let's take a look at our bns, shall we? The bns are the terms of the harmonic series. So the sum of the bns diverges. You could also see this using the p-series test. This is a p-series where the p-value is 1. So since the sum of the bns diverges, we conclude by the limit comparison test that the sum of the ans diverges as well. Moving on to our second example, you may recognize this as that tricky series from our comparison test video. There, we were able to show that the series converged, but the direct comparison we made was tough. It required a little creativity. Fortunately, however, the limit comparison test will chop right through this. The terms in our series are given by an equals root n plus 2 over n squared plus 2. And we'd like to compare this with terms bn that have the same asymptotic behavior. So I'm going to take the dominating terms in the numerator and denominator. That gives me root n over n squared, which is 1 over n to the 3 halves. As an exercise, I'll let you verify that the limit as n tends to infinity of a n over b n is equal to 1. Just like before, we get a constant that lies strictly between 0 and infinity. By my limit comparison test, the sum of the ans and the sum of the bns must either both converge or both diverge. But take a look at the bns. The sum of the bns is a convergent p series. Here, p is 3 halves, which is bigger than 1. Since the sum of the bns converges, the sum of the ans must also converge by the limit comparison test. If you haven't yet fallen in love with the limit comparison test, you will after this example. Suppose I want to know whether or not this thing converges. Oh, just look at this series. It is far from geometric and not something I even want to think about integrating. A direct comparison is possible, but it will require some creativity. Instead, let's just turn off our brains and feed this thing to the limit comparison test. I'm going to let a n denote the nth term of our series, and I'll construct the new terms b n using the dominating term in the numerator and the dominating term in the denominator. In the numerator, it looks like my dominating term is n squared, or if you like, 2n squared. It doesn't matter if you include the constant multiple or not, so I'm not going to include it, but go ahead and see what happens if you do. I have n squared in the numerator, and in the denominator, it looks like my dominating term is n to the 5, but really, this is under a square root. So the dominating term downstairs is really n to the 5 over 2. If you simplify this expression, you'll get 1 over n to the 1 half. 
Next, we have to compute our limit. The limit is n tends to infinity of a n over b n. If you substitute these expressions above and simplify the quotient, you should get the limit as n tends to infinity of 2 n to the 5 halves plus 3 n to the 3 halves divided by the square root of 5 plus n to the 5. Now, in the interest of time, I'm going to leave the remainder of this limit calculation to you, but I promise it's not too bad. If you factor out the largest power of n from the numerator and the largest power of n from the denominator, things will cancel out you should end up with a value of 2. Of course, if you left the 2 in the numerator for bn, your limit here will be 1. But in either case, you end up with a number between 0 and infinity. This means, according to the limit comparison test, that the sum of the ans and the sum of the bns either both converge or both diverge. Ah, but let's look at the sum of the bns. Once again, they form a p-series a divergent p-series, since p is 1 half less than 1. So the bn's form a divergent p-series, and therefore our original series, the sum of the an's, will diverge as well by the limit comparison test.